Hi there, this is Unmesh from Pixel Perfect. How are you doing? I hope you're having a fantastic day and turning it into a beautiful one. Well, Adobe has launched a brand new software, actually a brand new platform or iteration of Photoshop and they're calling it Photoshop on the web. It's basically a simplified version of Photoshop that you can run in your browser. But wait, didn't we already have that? Well, it was not from Adobe and it isn't Photoshop, but it actually is. Anyway, in this video, we're going to go through the features and limitations of this brand new Photoshop on the web. Also, to add a little twist, we'll compare it with its brother from another mother, um, Photop. So without any further ado, especially Michael, let's get started. Back in the magical world of Photoshop on the web this time. And before we begin, just wanted to quickly let you know that if you are interested in Photoshop, Lightroom, Adobe Audition, Premiere Pro, or any of the Adobe application, Adobe is actually running a 40% off Black Friday discount. So if you are interested, check the links in the description. The last time I checked, it was there in India and the US region. Maybe it's also there for other regions. So if you are from any other region, just check the links. It should have a 40% Black Friday deal. Also, Luminar is also running it. So if you're interested in Luminar AI or pre-ordering Luminar Neo, they have 40 to 50% off there. If you are interested in getting some skies for sky replacement, sky solution kit, which I highly recommend. I've talked about it in a previous video. So you can also get that. They're also running a 50% discount. So all of the deals will be in the description. So let's get started with Photoshop on the web. And first of all, let's understand how can you access it. First of all, log into your Creative Cloud account. I've already logged in. By the way, have a look at these tools. These are online tools that Photoshop has introduced recently. So you can remove background online for free for a limited time anyway. So from here, just click on File. This will open all of your cloud Photoshop documents. Unfortunately, at the moment, since it's beta maybe, you cannot just launch Photoshop on the web with nothing in there. You can create a new document after you open it, but you have to open it with something. So for instance, there's no way I can directly open Photoshop on the web. You just have to choose a cloud document that you already might have, open that up, and at the top, there will be Open in Photoshop on the web. Just click on this drop down. You can open that up in Photoshop in your desktop or Photoshop on the web beta. Let's click on continue. And by the way, thanks for the comments. This was from a previous video on Photoshop 2022 new features. So thank you. Now keep in mind, this is in beta. It might have some bugs. And as I'm opening it right now, I don't want to hide it. This has a bug, especially with this document. Maybe, maybe there's a problem with my Photoshop document. I don't know what it is, but everything is moving up a little bit. And as soon as I close the comments, and bring it down, it becomes normal. So I don't know, it's a web glitch or something, but anyway, I just opened up another document and in this document, there doesn't seem to have any problem and it all seems to work fine. So again, keep in mind, this is in beta. Now you can create a new document by clicking on this grid right there and choosing new. Another tab will open with a blank new document and you can choose the document size from right here. I don't know why the error is happening. Everything is being cut off. Let me try zooming out in Chrome. All right, zooming out helps a little bit. Let's keep it at about 80%. That helps. So if you encounter this problem, try zooming out. I suspect this might be a scaling issue with Windows, but anyway, let's move forward. Actually, I believe that the more we zoom in, it should adjust. Now it's right now adjusting properly. See, even if we zoom in, we can see all those things, but earlier we couldn't. So it is what it is. So right here, you can choose some preset dimensions or you can just dial in yours. I'm just gonna go with film and video and create one with 4K resolution. So 3840-2160 uh, background white, okay. RGB 8-bit, there's no 16-bit option. There really isn't no 16-bit option. Maybe it's due to browser limitations, but you know, I would have really loved to have 16-bit. Anyway, let's go with film and video, 4K, create. And just as the regular desktop version of Photoshop, you can open stuff like images, Photoshop documents by simply clicking on this grid right there and clicking on open. And now you can choose files from your cloud or upload something from your computer. Also, what I like here is that place embedded works perfectly. So if I wanted to place something on the canvas, just click on the grid and let's go to place. And you can just, again, upload something from your computer or choose something from here. Also, you can drag and drop, that works too. So let's try dragging and dropping and it just works. You can make it bigger according to your tastes. You can even crop to make the canvas bigger. Now, if you wanted to place something over this, that's also possible. And again, everything is layered. So let's just drag and drop this one and you can just size it accordingly as well. You can also play with masks here. So right now, if you open up the properties, so this is the property for that selected layer, we can just go down, decrease the opacity, and just again, here we have the rectangular marquee tool. We should have the rectangular marquee tool. There you go. And then we can make a selection of this area just as you do in Photoshop and create a mask out of it. So with that selection active, see this extra line there? 
a little bit bugs here and there. You can expect. All right, let's click on the mask button. There we go, perfect. Let's increase the opacity back in and just try some blend modes. So again, just let's change it to something like how do you feel about overlay? There you go. Interesting image, isn't it? Now, when it comes to selection tools, they have added some advanced ones. Like you do have the quick selection tool for selecting areas like this. You also have the select subject as well. So I can go ahead and click on select subject. Here you have it. Also, you have some actions as well inside of selection. So if you wanted to remove background, you can just directly click here instead of having to make a selection, create a mask out of it. None of that. Just do that. It'll automatically create a mask for you. And you're all sorted and you can bring in a new background if you wish to. So let's drag in this one and put it under nature portrait. Now the lights are opposite. So we need to flip the background. Click on transform tool and no, you cannot press control or command D here because it will simply create a brand new tab. Anyway, so let's uh, click on this button. It'll just flip it horizontally and click on done. Now I do understand you would want some depth of field here, but unfortunately there's no Gaussian blur here. Now you do have healing and cloning if you wanted to remove something. So you have the spot healing brush tool, the healing and the clone stamp tool. So let's select the healing brush tool. And for that, we're gonna create a brand new layer. And there is definitely an option to sample all the layers. So let's create a new layer by clicking on the plus button. And then you can choose sample current and below, pretty much similar and hit alter option to take a sample. And with the bracket keys, yes, you can make it larger and you can just fill up certain areas if you wish to. Now coming to layers and adjustments, the number one demerit here, besides not having curves, we're gonna get to that later. There is no way to convert a layer into a smart object. No way to do that. So right now, if I take this nature portrait right here and if I transform it by clicking on this button and if I make it very, very small and click on done, all right, and then if I transform it big again, click on done, have a look. We have lost so much details. By the way, that's a nice way to add blur. We should do the same with the background. Jokes apart, that's really a huge demerit. No smart objects. Even if you right click, there is no option right here to create a smart object. Click on the three dots, no option right here as well. And if you do want to add an adjustment and look at its properties, this is the way to do it. Click on the adjustment icon right there and you can choose any one of these. Let's choose brightness contrast. And at the bottom, you should see properties. If you don't see it, this just means you don't have this button turned on. So you can turn on the properties, you can turn on the comments. So you can choose any one of these and it will show up alongside layers. If you do want to turn off the layers, you can turn that off. Anyway, let's open up the properties. Let's open up the layers and make sure you have chosen the adjustment layer that you want to modify. And from here, you can control the contrast and the brightness. So any adjustment you have selected, you can modify with the properties. Just make sure properties button is checked. Now talking about adjustments, how can we just not cry? Let's take a look at the adjustments. We do not have curves. Why does Adobe has to always delay the curves? The same thing happened with Photoshop on iPad. Now the same thing is happening right here. What is it with curves, man? Anyway, so there is no curves, unfortunately. But the good news is if you click on the question mark right here and click on welcome, and if you scroll down, have a look in what's coming. The very first thing is curves. I think they're listening. Another interesting thing about Photoshop on the web is that if you did want to change the blend mode, for example, let's say I wanted to change the blend mode of black and white adjustment layer. Have a look. The blend modes do give a preview, but apart from that, they also give you a thumbnail that gives you a general idea of what each blend mode can do. So if this is blue, and if you applied a multiply blend mode on top of a landscape, this is how it would look. So that's what it basically shows. So for this example, we can go with something like soft light or overlay just to show you what it can do and then probably decrease the opacity. Speaking of opacity, you don't have the fill adjustment here. Now fill can be useful if you do apply layer styles like drop shadow, but again, you don't have layer styles. But fill is also very useful, especially if you're using the special eight blend modes. We have a video about it. And when you change the fill and those blend modes are selected, it controls the projection of that layer and not just the transparency as opacity does. Watch that video, it's, it's a very interesting slider. And also on the topic of adjustments, as we were discussing with this example, we wanted to blur the background, but we just cannot because there is no filter right here. Like really no filters. Now, when you do open photop.com, it's a whole new world and, you know, very, very much breathable than Adobe's Photoshop on the web, because right now you can do everything right here. It, and it's more like Photoshop, way more like Photoshop than Adobe's own Photoshop on the web. So right here, if I wanted to blur the background, I can go to filter, you know, blur, the same thing, Gaussian blur, 
do whatever you want. Now that was on another layer, but just excuse that. You get the point. So you can even bring that down, merge the layers easily, and then you can go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur. See, everything is just right there and you can do whatever you want. So let's add a slight little bit of blur. Hit OK. Done. And you know what? There is curves. There has to be curves. So if I click on this, see, there is. Oh my gosh. And if you did want to create a clipping mask, hold the Alt key, the Option key, and click on the layer. And it does create a clipping mask. And guess what? We were talking about layer styles, right? It, that it doesn't have that well. If you double click on the right hand side of the layer, it has the layer styles dialog box. And it is more like Photoshop's than Photoshop. I hope that makes sense. Now, what I like about Photoshop on the web is that it gives you access to all of Adobe's premium fonts, if you are a member, of course. If you don't like any font right here, you can click on more fonts and you would have some categories to go through. So you can, let's say, let's choose this category and you can just choose any font in this category. You know, you have a lot of options. If you want something luxury, let's go with that. And let's choose something like this, all right? Interesting. Now click on done. You can make it bigger by opening up the transform. But what about keyboard shortcuts? Let's discuss that next. Let's place it here. Done. And of course, if you wanted to change the color, properties would be right here. Make sure this is turned on and then you can change the fill color to whatever you wish. Let's bring it behind the subject right here and it looks nice. The one drawback here is that you cannot load your own font. There's no option right here to do that. However, if you are in Photopy and if you add some text right here. So even if I type something like travel, all right, I'm not going to make it big. Just wanted to share with you the font thing. If we select the text at the top, if you click on the drop down, there are lots of fonts here, but you can also load your own font by clicking on load font. And then you can just locate the font and open it from right here. Let's click on cancel for now. So that's an option there with Photo P. Coming back to Photoshop on the web, the keyboard shortcuts here are a little different from the desktop version of Photoshop because due to the browser, there definitely can be some limitations. So if you click on the question mark right here and you can just open up the keyboard shortcuts by clicking on view keyboard shortcuts, you would notice that transform tool is not controller command T. It also adds Alt to it. Because if you are on a browser like Google Chrome and if you press control or command T, it just creates a brand new tab. So with some slight changes just here and there, most of the shortcuts are the same. One major advantage of working on a cloud document, and yes, you can work on cloud document from your desktop version of Photoshop as well, is that you can comment here. So you can comment anything you want and you can share with other people so that they can share their comments. For example, if someone says we need to increase contrast right here, so you can just draw an annotation and just say increase contrast and comment here. All right. And now you can share it with anyone by clicking on share and you can invite somebody or create a public link if you wish to. That's up to you. And from here, many people can comment. And when you highlight those comments, those annotations would be highlighted too. Now let's talk about saving and exporting. If you're working with Photoshop on the web, by default, it only allows you to work with cloud documents. So whatever you're working, it's all online. So if you click on save by clicking on this grid and click on save right here, it will save it in the cloud. Right now, if you do want to export it and if you do want to have an offline version, you can always export it by clicking on this button and you can quick export as a JPEG, PSD, PNG or whatever you wish. You can also export the same thing from right here. So that's an option. Now, right now we can clearly tell that this particular document is saved the way it is. And how can we tell that? Because there's no asterisk right there. Let's say we create a new layer and let's say we paint something in here. All right. Look at the asterisk here. It just means that it has unsaved changes. As soon as you save it by clicking here, look, it's uploading that, it's saving those changes. Have a look, that icon went away. This means it's saved. It also automatically keeps saving from time to time. So if I just turned it off, right now there's this asterisk sign and it will automatically, even if I don't do anything, it will be saved. Have a look, I didn't do anything and it is saved with those changes. And that I think is one of the biggest advantages for Adobe as a whole, because it has its own cloud, it has Photoshop on the web, you can work with other Adobe applications, you can share, collaborate, and actually you're paying for it. I have no complaints with Photo P. Of course, it's free, but here you do not have any option for saving it in the cloud. But then again, this is free. How can somebody give you free cloud storage. So again, if you're paying for services, then Adobe, you have that option and flexibility to collaborate, share, store it in the cloud. And if you're into that, 
this as a major advantage. Now let's talk about the UI as a whole. Now if you're working with original version of Photoshop, you have all these panels, right? So you can just move it anywhere. You can close it if you wish to. However, with Photoshop on the web, at first I was trying to just move it and close it, nothing was happening. It's actually very simple. Click on this button and it takes away the layers. Click on this button, it takes away the comments or whatever you have turned on. So if you click on that, properties would be open. Along with it, you want to have layers open, so click on that. So it's like turn off and on button. The other thing I like here is that it has two themes. If you go to settings, you have a light theme and a dark theme. And this is what I really, really like. And not even Photoshop's desktop version has large icons or large text. So there's an option to choose large and it gets much larger. And I really like this. But Photoshop's original one, especially if you're working with 4K screens, sometimes they can become very, very small. Right now I've scaled with Windows, but if it's not scaled, this is how it looks. Now let's talk about a few things that I would love to see change in this UI. Maybe it's not possible, but just my opinions. Now, of course, Photoshop on the web is very limited. However, the UI does not resemble the Photoshop on desktop version. So finding and locating things can be very difficult. However, if you're familiar with Photoshop on desktop, and if you jump to Photo P, it's way more familiar. It's like exact Xerox copy of it. You would absolutely feel right at home with this one uh, if for some reason your Adobe subscription expired. Anyway, so back to Photoshop on the web. There are little things here and there that just give me the headaches. If you look at Photoshop on the desktop version, we are absolutely used to turning off and on the layers by clicking on this I button, which are on the left hand side of the layer. It's like a muscle memory here. But if you look at Photoshop on the web, it's on the right hand side. So having used Photoshop so much, automatically my hand goes there without even thinking about it. And then, you know, I have to think about it. And again, there are just little opposite things that might get to you. If you were to create a brand new layer in Photoshop desktop version, you would click on this icon right there, right? At the bottom of all the layers, at the bottom, you would see all of these icons. But with Photoshop in your desktop, all of them are at the top. So your hand again goes there and tries to find that, but then it's on the top. Now I do understand that of course it's beta and has limited functionality, but the irony here is that it resembles more of the UI of Photoshop on iPad, but this website doesn't work on mobile devices. However, Photopea is more like Photoshop than Adobe. So I don't know what to make of this. But the great thing here is that anytime you feel stuck or limited, let's say you were working on a laptop that doesn't have Photoshop and you worked on the idea a little bit and you came back to your home, opened up your main computer and you want to continue this, you can just open this up and, you know, open in desktop app. There's a button for it. Just click on that and it will open that up and we have a problem here. Anyway, if we do manually, I think it would work. So it shows up right here. So you can just open it from right here. Um, yeah. It's still in beta. Talking about future features, we have curves, refine edge. I would really like to see the raw file support and see how that turns out. Just give us smart objects. That would be much better. Oh, there is. Pretty cool. Looking forward to it. Wishing all the very best to the Adobe team. I'm sure they're going to do awesome. And so happy to see this. This is a great initiative by Adobe. And again, comparing it with Photo P might not be completely justified because Photoshop in the desktop version is still the most powerful application when it comes to raster graphics. And if you're working with Photoshop on the web, you can always switch to Photoshop on desktop. And again, the second thing is, it's still in beta, it just launched. I would have loved to see the UI more like Photoshop on desktop, just as Photopea does. But then again, I think Adobe is trying to make it mobile friendly as well in the future. I'm asking a lot, but maybe there can be a mobile version just as mobile websites happen. And there can be a desktop version for desktop websites, maybe? Either way, at the moment, this is something that I don't find myself using. It's very, very limited. And even if we do use it right now, it won't make sense because we would have to ultimately jump in to Photoshop's desktop version. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, make sure to give us a like and also don't forget to subscribe and not just subscribe. Ring the bell so that you, my friend, don't miss any other future tips, tricks, or tutorials. I would like to take this moment to thank all these nice and amazing people for supporting Piximperfect on Patreon and helping keep Piximperfect free for everybody forever. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for your time. I'll see you in my next one. Until then, stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating.